Welcome to the Two Disabled Dudes Podcast. We believe life is about how we react. All right, thanks for tuning in today. My name is Sean, and I am so excited that you are listening. Kyle and I absolutely enjoy and look forward to the rare occasion when we actually get to record with somebody face to face. And the recording we have for you coming up today is one of those recordings. Um, Not too long ago, Kyle and I were hanging out in San Diego for a couple of days with the Rare Patient Advocacy Summit that Global Genes puts on. And we had a chance to sit down with a couple, well, a couple of people we had met before and somebody that I, at least, I had never met. So yep. it was fun to be able to sit down in a room. So fair warning, we're going to share the interview with you shortly. That that piece of the interview was done with one pretty cool microphone, but there were five of us kind of huddled around our amazing little makeshift studio. So just fair warning, uh, it's still pretty decent quality, but probably not what you've come to, I don't know. Appreciate. What you with us. Yeah. yeah, what you, yeah, whatever. What we'd like to, um, yeah. yeah. But speaking of, Kyle, I, I wanted to, I don't know if it's a confession or what you might call it, but I recently made an observation Oh, that uh-oh. that I think might be in the best interest of our listeners. All right, let's hear so, it. So let me tell our, make sure our guests understand the process. So Kyle and I, you know, opposite ends of the country, so we record remotely, right? So Kyle has a track and I have my track. And we're talking to each other through Skype or on the phone just so we have a fluid conversation. And then our good friend Jake puts our two clean tracks together. And you have a decent quality sounding podcast, right? Well, when Kyle and I are reviewing our podcast and we're maybe cutting stuff out or trying to add stuff in... I'm listening through Google Drive, right? And and I can't speed up the recording um, or slow it down. Like, it just is what it is. So I have to listen in real time. It's not until the episode goes live, like on iTunes, where I can actually fast forward or speed up the vocals um, time and a half or whatever. Yeah. And, man, Kyle... You and I sound so much better when we when I speed up the vocal. Oh my god! I totally <laughs> agree. ITunes. I've done that before too, <laughs> and um, it's a different experience. Like, first of all, the episode only lasts fifteen minutes instead of yeah. listening to us blab on for half an hour. Yeah, but and every the, like the natural pauses go away. The ums and uh, you know all yeah. that. Filler stuff kind of goes away. No, the, the telling thing is when you have it sped up and then you slow it back down to normal and you're like, oh, oh my gosh, get to the point already. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't mean to make fun of you or myself, but I do at the same time. So I, I guess I really just want to encourage our listeners to speed it up a little bit. Yeah. You might you might really enjoy us. Uh, <laughs> In that way, and and I wonder how many listeners right now are probably saying, "Duh, that's what we've always done." You guys suck. Otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't stand it if we oh. didn't speed it up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Oh man. All right. Well, I just wanted to encourage you, listeners, to uh, check that out. Before we play our interview, Kyle, I know you've had a lot going on the last couple of weeks. One of those things was your birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, How thanks, was it, man. by the way? Appreciate Welcome. it. Yeah, it was fun. I uh, I went out to breakfast, brunch with some friends, and then I 
Came home and I did some laundry and cleaned up my apartment like I've been meaning to. Sounds like a a perfect 38 year old's (laughs) birthday. (laughs) I know. It was a rager around here, man. Yeah, right, right. Well, um, I know and I remember that one thing you asked for were Amazon reviews. I must confess, I actually opened Amazon for your book and I began to type. But then I got distracted and never went back to it. Um, <laughs> so real quick, if, I, I'll tell everybody for you. All right. W- one thing Kyle's asking for this year was some reviews on his new book that came out this year. So shifting into high gear by our very own Kyle Bryant. We'd both appreciate, and especially Kyle, if you would pull it up on Amazon and maybe rate it, review it tell the world to read it themselves too so that that would be huge so sean i have a story to share so you know the farah energy ball was just recently we stayed at the embassy suites in downtown tampa and Mm. it was fine it was reaction the event was amazing as always the hotel stay not so much so uh-huh. we get there, and there's a whole bunch of us that need accessible rooms. Mm-hmm. So we go there, and it was like 4 o'clock. That's check-in time, right? Mm-hmm. So we right. go to the thing, and they go, oh, we're getting your rooms ready. It'll just be a few minutes. Hour and a half later, they come oh, to right. me, and they're like, oh, we've got your key. You ready? And I'm asleep on a couch in the lobby. Oh, and okay. so anyway, that was the first thing that kind of um, did not sit well with me. So the next day, I come back and I'm going to take a nap before the event because, I mean, it's a long night. I mean, I want I want to be yep. good for the event. So I'm going to go to sleep. I get to my room and right above my room, they're doing construction, like oh. directly <laughs> above the bed. <laughs> So there's this there's a super loud um like drill going right above my bed and I I don't I planned to try to sleep for like an hour and a half no it was more like almost nothing so oh, during that time I took a little uh audio of it so i could share it with you and oh. let you know how terrible it was because i love to complain <laughs> okay so um here i'm gonna play it for you and Just get it off your chest right here is this is this is a safe place <laughs> thank you, you to complain thank you so much This is what it sounds like, and this is what a normal voice is. Just for comparison, this is ridiculous. Um, yes. My face was like, you know, an inch and a half away from the microphone when I was doing that, and those things Hmm. were like, what, 10 feet away or whatever? Sure. Yeah. Sure. So. Wow. Anyway, that, that. I hope. Was there like a rate discount or something during this weekend? I know. I was hoping. It's not like they didn't know that was going on, right? And I even called down. I was like, hey, uh, when's the construction? It was Saturday. Come on. Yeah. I was like, huh. when's the construction ending? And they're like, oh, it's 6 p.m. Like, And they didn't say anything <laughs> like, oh, here, we can do whatever for you. Like, we know it's mm-hmm. a pain in the ass. No, you know what? They didn't even have to say, we'll do this for you. All they had to recognize is that it was a pain in the butt for me, you know? That's annoying. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder how, how that's handled because, you know, they're not the only hotel to go through a renovation. Right. And it's not like they're going to call everybody with the reservation and be like, hey, we're under construction, so maybe you don't want to stay here. Yeah. 
Uh, so I, I wonder what the approach normally is. Yeah, no, they didn't say anything about it. Like, even when I was checking in, they gave me the room. They knew exactly what room I was going to be in. They knew the construction was going on the next day. They didn't say anything. So, huh. anyway, it was... Well, I'm glad you shared that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, I'm also glad that we didn't have such construction in our hotel room with the recording we or the interview we're about to play. Oh, for that's a good call. <laughs> yeah, that would have been bad. So let's let's do it. Um, actually, real quick, Kyle, sorry. With the Embassy Sweet State, where was the shampoo? Oh, the shampoo was definitely not in the shower. And um, mm, so yeah, that, that it was on the sink once again. Not cool. <laughs> so that, that particular location is not winning with you definitely not um i mean the only thing is it's really convenient because the venue for the event is like right across the street so we'll probably be back but i'm not gonna enjoy it yeah all right well i think our listeners will enjoy this particular particular conversation Let's let's get right into it. Enjoy this recording. Thanks for being here. All right. We are hanging out currently right this moment at the time of recording. We are in beautiful San Diego, California. We have set up a makeshift studio. Yeah, it's beautiful. Inside it's, our hotel room. It's plush. It's 11th floor. Yeah. Uh, it's only a 13th floor story built i mean we are up here yeah and the recorder is sitting on a trash can that is upside down <laughs> yeah so just to give everybody an idea of of the luxury we're living professional <laughs> yeah. professional setup yeah this anyway, is quite the experience guys. right <laughs> it's exciting kyle and i are uh at the global genes rare patient advocacy summit and of course, we're meeting all kinds of fun and really cool and powerful people. And three of them have joined us in our plush hotel room right now to hang out with us and tell us a bit about who they are and what they're doing. Do you want to? How's your How are your couple days in San Diego? It's been awesome. I think it's just you know, everyone with a rare disease can attest to the fact that it's amazing to meet other people with with a rare disease and a similar condition because the experience is so similar no matter what disease you have. For our listeners, we have Anna and Seth and Christina with us today and they're going to share a little bit about the uh, organization that they have started. Maybe for our listeners, we should go down the line and have everyone introduce themselves, take a minute or two. And uh, so, Anna, maybe we'll start with you. Sure, yeah. So, um, I am involved because I have a rare disease. It's called Allergeal Syndrome. Um, it took me like seven years to learn how to spell that and then how to say it. No big deal. Um, I was diagnosed at about six months old. Um, it affects about roughly one in 70,000 people. And uh, yeah, so my story kind of starts, I feel like, for a lot of people. I got involved for selfish reasons. (laughs) I wanted support and connection. And so um, I started the first private young adult Facebook group for those with my condition. Um, And we have about 30 members in 18 countries represented. And that's where it started. And um, since then, I joined a board of my patient advocacy organization that supports my condition. Was on that for a couple years. And... Then I met Seth, jumped in head first um, with our Odyssey um, because, again, selfish reasons. It's things that I needed now. You join the community for selfish reasons because you're like, I need answers. I need emotional support for me. Exactly. <laughs> but, but then you realize through the process that you're just a small piece of a big community. Mm-hmm. And that's even more empowering, right? You oh, feel yeah. small at it. At, at some level, but but also it's incredibly empowering to be a part of this much bigger community. So yes, yeah. for sure. Awesome. All right, Seth, um, introduce yourself. My name is Seth, and I also come from a family impacted by a rare condition known as Huntington's disease, 
which is like having ALS, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's all in the one condition. It slowly deteriorates a person's physical and cognitive abilities within a 10 to 20 year lifespan. My mom had it for about 17 years. And when I was 15, that's when I first learned about it. Five years later, when I was 20, I decided to go through genetic testing, tested positive for the condition. I'm currently pre-symptomatic, but guaranteed to get the condition unless there's an effective treatment or cure. And so that's kind of my motivation is to continue to fight back, get more involved, stay involved. And over the years, connected with other young people within Huntington's disease, but then more recently, learned about this larger community as we discussed and found out that there's a lot of young young adults impacted not just by a rare condition but also chronic condition and I say that because we know that there are a lot of rare diseases that are also chronic but there's also chronic conditions out there like diabetes, lupus, Crohn's and colitis, arthritis, the list goes on and so we want to be able to be inclusive of all of these young adults impacted by one of those health conditions. And so that's kind of, again, where our Odyssey came about, uh, 501c3, and we'll get into it a little bit more, but yeah. I uh, I love it. I love it. Awesome. All of it. <laughs> Good deal. All right, Christina, let's, uh, let's hear your story. All right. My name's Christina with a K, wolf with an E on the end. Ow! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I get to go last because I'm sitting in the chair and not forced to sit on the bed um <laughs> it's really plush here but yeah it's, really it's plush. plush yeah um so i was diagnosed so my story is a lot different than both anna and seth's story i feel a little bit like an outcast um but that's part of why our odyssey was formed to make people feel like they belong um I was diagnosed with an autoimmune chronic condition when I was six years old. It's called type 1 diabetes. It's actually very common. Of all of the diabetes types, it's um, about 5% of those diagnoses are type 1, but still 5% of all diabetes cases in the world is quite a few peeps. So um, I'm not somebody that has a rare disease. Um, However, because I've lived with it my entire life, Um, I've kind of gone through a lot of uh, social and emotional um, things that I've dealt with Um, and when I was first diagnosed I also told my parents that I was going to make a difference for other people so y'all were talking about being selfish and I was six years old I didn't know anything about what I was having to face so soon Um, and I already kind of stepped up to the plate and said I don't want anybody to have to deal with this Mm -hmm. Ever, um, one up in us, and so that's how I got into this. I work in the pharmaceutical industry. I do clinical research. Um, I do patient engagement, and Seth and I cross paths. Anna and I cross paths, and our Odyssey was born. So you guys have mentioned our Odyssey a few times. Can you define what that is? Yeah. So. One of the toughest things, as I'm sure you both know, is coming up with a cool name and a creative name where it's going to stick. And when we started to try to figure out what's a good name for an organization and something that's going to like, you know, make people think, we were like, well, there's the Odyssey, right? And Odyssey is a journey and we want to do it together. So it's not mine, it's not yours, it's ours. You know, the mission is to connect young adults impacted by a rare, rare or chronic condition to social emotional support in the hope of improving quality of life. Mm-hmm. Really the focus is 18 to 35 year olds, but again, if they're 36 or 37, it's not like we're gonna just give them the boot. Thanks um, for saying that, man. It makes me feel we're really good. Yeah, I got you, man. <laughs> uh, but he'll, I th- he'll be 38 soon. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay, well, in that case, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, alumni. Cross the line. Yeah. Yeah. No, and so, you know, even with that older group, though, I think it's opportunities to, yes, be an alum, be a mentor to the younger generation. Right. But we really want to also help empower and uh, thrive together mm-hmm. with this next generation of the health community. Yeah. So, so what's the get? Like, why? Why do you guys feel like young adults aren't quite served in their ability to create community? Like, I mean, there we're, we're at this amazing event, you know, and we're all connecting as a community, and it's so awesome. 
it, it, it sounds like you guys are creating this because you feel like the young adult population is not being served quite as specifically. So can you tell us a little about that and why that is? Yeah, so I'll kind of give, I'm going to get nerdy really quick. We're going to get nerdy. I'll give kind of the data and let y'all kind of talk about the stuff. feelings. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. Yeah. 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 So there's health data that supports that young adults actually cost the most. Young adults living specifically with chronic diseases cost the most in our health system. And it's because there isn't coverage available slash this population, you know, post moving out from their parents' house. They don't necessarily always get covered. They don't know how to get the right medicines. So the health, the cost of healthcare spending actually goes up. There's a lot of waste involved with that. There are numbers to support that. Um, so I think beyond kind of the warm and fuzzies or lack of warm and fuzzies. <laughs> yeah there's data to support that this is a huge need. The other part of that um, that I experienced personally is, you know, we have all these amazing patient advocacy groups that are doing, like, outstanding work um, and looking for a cure and improving quality of life of kiddos. However, um, you know, once they survive to young adulthood, mm -hmm. then there's no support. And so I know I personally experienced, um, you know, trying to make that happen in different groups and, and, you know, saying, like, hey, we're surviving now. Like, you're doing a great job. Um, so now, like, we have these needs. You know, we're dealing with, we're going into a career. How in the world do, do I tell anyone that I have a disease? Like, what do I do? And all these questions. Um, and a lot of these organizations are at capacity. Um, and the work they're doing is incre incredibly important, right? They're helping these young um, people with little kiddos grow up. And so that's kind of where, you know, we decided that instead of trying to get them to add one more thing um, to try to support young adults, for them to continue to focus on helping um, find a cure, helping these kids thrive, helping them live longer. And, you know, honestly, we could take that on. Um, as young adults and go from there and kind of fill that gap as opposed to asking these organizations that are already being run by caregivers and things like this um, to take that on and add to their plate. You know, I think a big thing in life is, especially these days with social media, it's finding your tribe. Oh, yeah. You know, it's your community. Mm -hmm. And assuming life goes well mm -hmm. for a lot of people, there's always changes. Mm -hmm. You know, you get into teenagehood, and so you ditch your younger siblings or, the, you know, the, the younger kids. Or when yeah. you get to high school or even college, mm -hmm. like, there are such natural, I think, natural gaps in growing mm -hmm. and in, in the way society shifts when we hit certain ages or yeah. certain periods of life, whether it be college or getting married or, you know, whatever it may be. Um, and I love that you guys are filling a gap mm -hmm. where you're giving place, giving people a place to connect beyond what maybe they grew up with, so that they can find a new tribe or mm -hmm. you know grow mm -hmm. the community that they're in, maybe with a few people closer in age yeah. mm -hmm. to yeah. them. No, it's, it's definitely a big thing. I mean, when we have such a focus in the health space, of like kids or older adults and then there's a subpopulation and you know when we talk about different transitional er periods like you said whether it's getting married or family planning or dating how to talk to friends how to feel normal when going to college right I mean if you're taking your medication like you can't skip that just because you want to go fit in or you can't like if if the side effects say you can't drink don't go drinking right. because you want to go fit right. in with your, mm -hmm. your peers in college and so it's these discussions that we want to have is around these specific challenges that young adults face that are very different than a, than a child and very different from an older adult. And it's when we look at transitional care, we got to look at the holistic mm -hmm. approach. Mm -hmm. So it's it's that social emotional aspect, that gap you're talking about, Sean, that we really want to fill. Right, and like how to f how how others have found solutions to still finding ways to fit in. Um, and do normal things and mm. be a normal person, air quotes. Quote. Yeah. yeah, air quotes. <laughs> air quotes uh, yeah. You know, while living with a disease and continuing to manage your condition effectively. 
Yeah, and you brought up like this conference, right? And this conference is amazing. It's bringing all of us together. Um, but I know my first time going to a rare disease conference was incredibly overwhelming. Mm-hmm. I was in college. Like the day before I flew out here, I was eating like three day old pizza in a really crappy apartment, like studying for like a final, you know? And then I come here and I felt like I did not belong Mm -hmm. because there's all these professionals and there's all these like pharmaceutical companies and researchers. And I was like, how I I just live with this and (laughs) and I want support. And so I think that's the other thing is like with our Odyssey, you don't have to be involved heavily in the rare disease community and the chronic yeah. illness community literally you qualify by being a young adult and having it and that's that's all you need you don't mm-hmm. have to be a big wig you don't have to be a big name um just being yourself and that's yeah. all it takes yeah. to be involved and we want to meet you where you are yes and that includes caregivers okay. um, of young adults too. so we'll talk about the care caregiving aspect a little bit maybe I have a twin sister. We're fraternal. Uh, She does not have type 1 diabetes, but growing up with her, she always felt like she had to, like, sleep next to me to make sure that I would wake up Mm. because she knew there were some days where I wouldn't. Um, And, I mean, I think if we had something like our Odyssey when we were transitioning, it would have not only empowered me, but it would have also empowered her because I think she worried a lot when I started doing the, you know, the college stuff, I was still way too young to drink, but I did it anyway because I was going rogue. Right. <laughs> Didn't mean. And if I had our Odyssey, maybe that yeah. would have, you know, decreased a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and going off that. So one thing that she touched upon is the siblings, right? Like the siblings who may not be directly impacted, but they still are because they might have to be a caregiver or help take care of them. And then the other aspect is being a caregiver for a parent who may have a health condition. So growing up, my mom, who was sick, my dad was the main caregiver, but I still had to take on additional responsibility. I had to do things that my friends weren't doing. And that just, that was very stressful. It was very overwhelming. Um, And so trying to also support those people and, and sharing advice, sharing tips, yeah. And then talking about the importance of self care too. You know, when yeah. you're a caregiver, I've seen it time and time again is like you need to take care of yourself too. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it's going to make it too hard on you. And I think it, we can definitely bridge the gap for any young adults. And that's why I use, you know, we use impacted because when you hear affected, a, t- a lot of times we think, okay, they have it. But mm-hmm. when it's a mm-hmm. diagnosis, it, it's not always an individual it's a family diagnosis because right. it impacts everyone in the family in the community and their friends and yep. the, yeah so that's why we don't want to feel like we're excluding anyone because yeah if you're a good friend of someone with a condition and you just want to learn and you want to connect with others mm-hmm. then come join yeah yeah i like it so so what are the things that our odyssey is actually doing so we're really like we started everything by just being cool, you know. Yeah. We're really good um, at and it. Then, like we're really good at being cool. So let me just preface it that way. Um, <laughs> and then we started being really cool at meetups and connecting with each other in person mm-hmm. and making each other feel even cooler. Yeah. Um, and we're trying to expand that into kind of an online community as well for some people who may be in rural or suburban areas that can't make it to our metropolitan meetups. And so the goals of 2020 is for us to host 10 to 12 meetups um, in metropolitan areas, including Boston, Philadelphia, DC, New York, New York, Raleigh, North Carolina. We're looking into a few other metropolitan what, cities. What about well. the West Coast? We, West side? Yeah, yeah. So that's a great question. I, we're trying to do baby steps and yeah. pilot the East Coast first and make okay. sure our programming is effective. We are in, in San Diego right now because we yeah. all had the opportunity to be here. We're going to throw down when we're on the West Coast anyway. But um, mm. I think those are kind of a little bit more when we're there. We'll plan yeah. them. Yeah. So. No? Uh-huh. Yeah, and then, uh, and then on top of that, when you think about it, we are not trying to compete with nonprofits, as you mentioned. There's a lot of nonprofits out there, especially disease specific. So we're all about collaborating. And as Anna mentioned previously, 
it's not adding to their plate, it's actually taking off because they can only do so much. They have mm. limited resources. So we're really looking to partner with nonprofit organizations to help drive their young adults and engage them and get them involved and meet them where they are. And so that could be connecting with them about when our meetups are, passing up, you know, spreading the word about it, but also future opportunities to help run young adult tracks for their conferences or their regional mm. meetups. Oh, geared yeah. towards young people and really helping them plan those based off of the experience and knowledge we know, not just living with it, but talking with young adults from so many different rare and chronic conditions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, and so the other thing um, that we're working to do is to really break down barriers for young adults. Because, um, like I mentioned, you know, a lot of us we don't have a lot of money for <laughs> young yeah. adults. We're figuring it out. And so we want to make sure that. Um, in order to really serve our mission and be authentic and real about it, um, we want to break down as many barriers as possible. And so with that, um, we are, you know, looking into funding and finding ways to do that. So that is going to look like, um, you know, having food and drinks provided at our meetups and taking that financial burden away. It's going to be, you know, travel scholarships. It's going to look like um, just things like that and really kind of getting rid of those barriers because, If we're really going to do our mission, then it needs to be open and accessible to everyone. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's that's the other key piece, um, especially with the virtual meetups. I'm over in Western Kentucky, so all of our meetups next year, I'm just going to be like, missing out, it's fine. Um, (laughs) And so that's the other thing is that, you know, we really want to make sure that we do meet everyone where they are and breaking down those barriers. Uh, where where does the funding come from? Like, what is your plan to like find funding for this? You know, are individuals raising the funds or like I don't know where where what what's the plan there? Kyle, can you take out your wallet real quick? Oh. <laughs> it's yeah, coming no, from you. There's, yeah. there's not yeah. much in there. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's a, it's a kind of a combination of things. We're trying to get really creative. Um, going back to what Anna was elaborating on we really want to make sure that all the funds that we do raise are going directly to our mission which is to enable other young adults to be empowered uh, by connecting with us and by us meeting them where they're at if you know anybody that uh-huh. wants to just readily give it out yeah that'd be great um, you got we're currently working <laughs> on a couple of con- different conversations um, with those that are focused both in rare and chronic diseases um, empowering people but also different organizations or companies that are targeting young adults Mm -hmm. I'm not going to name any names but there are some big brand names that are out there in in fashion and athletic gear stuff like that that target young adults and we're going after them too so one other way that we might be raising some funds is doing like what I call friend raisers. So I'm doing a big hike in November, uh, hiking the Annapurna circuit circuit in Nepal. And I wow. wanna try to raise some funds and, and awareness, maybe have a little our Odyssey thing at the top of the mountain. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like an opportunity like that. It's like a challenge that I'm gonna do and who's gonna support it. Yeah. And maybe it's something like that, but it's tr- trying to think outside the box as well. Yeah. So where do people find the information on our Odyssey? www.ourodyssey.org Alright. Nice. And I assume you guys are on like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook? Yes. All the things. All of it. All, All of it. it. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. 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 And and now you're on the Two Disabled Dudes podcast. Yes. Woo woo. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Alright. Well, thanks for hanging out with us today and, and sharing a little bit about your journeys and of course the the mission behind our honesty. Thanks for having us. Thanks Thanks for for inviting us us into your plush place. Yeah, yeah, big time. Thank you for listening to the Two Disabled Dudes podcast. Find us online at twodisableddudes.com and please subscribe on the iTunes. Connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And special thanks to our audio producer, Jake Tompkins. Until next time, keep living with urgency.